Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor artist. So it is finally October, my favorite month of the year, and I can start painting little Halloween watercolors for you. I'm really excited. Uh, someone had requested that I paint a haunted house, so that is gonna be my first video of the month. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so to get started, I have my Arches watercolor paper. I have Grumbacher paint brushes, a size zero, five, and seven. I've got my pencil, my eraser. I'm also gonna be bringing in at the end of the painting this Archival Ink um, pen, Micron is the brand. It's a 03 if you have these. Um, I'm sure there's many different brands out there, but this is the only brand that I've ever used and I love it, so I'm just gonna be sticking with this one. Um, and then also at the end of the painting, we're gonna be bringing in our Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, Bleed Proof White. So if you wanna pop some of your highlights, we are gonna be leaving white space like you're supposed to um, for watercolor paintings, but if you wanna pop some of your highlights, I do recommend this. It's wonderful. Um, it's, uh, it's almost like an acrylic, but like a watered down acrylic. It's, it's really nice. Okay, so we're gonna exaggerate our haunted house here. We're gonna make it look kind of cartoonish where the bottom is smaller and it's gonna look like it's angled up. So it's gonna give it this really, really weird angle. Um, and the walls are gonna be curved a little bit. I am gonna curve these walls. So you're gonna wanna start by lightly sketching out where the bottom of your house is gonna be. And you can, I'm just choosing like down here, you can make it even lower. You could even choose to make your house all the way down to the edge of the paper. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then make your house just kind of goofy looking because um, haunted houses are supposed to be kind of just like all these little, I don't know, dormers and um, windows here and a window there. And so just kind of make it look goofy. Your house does not have to look like mine. But if you do want to follow along, I'm just starting out with like a little square here. I'm gonna put on like a little roof here. And then I think I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more. And I'm gonna put like a little um, triangular roof on it up here. And then let's see, um, we'll do the windows last. So let's bring it down. And I'm gonna bring the roof down like this. And then this wall here, I'm gonna actually curve it up a little bit, angle it up a little bit, because I want it to make it look like the house is going up. And actually, you might even wanna just angle some of these walls too while you're at it. So just take your eraser and just lightly erase some of those lines. You could even just do this one too. It just depends on how cartoony you want this to look. And I want mine to look pretty cartoony, so it's just gonna have all wobbly walls and um, angles. Then I'm gonna bring part of the house up like this. So I angled those walls as well, but the other way now. And I'm gonna give it another peek over here. And let's do another one, maybe like right here. Another triangle, maybe like this triangle's peeking out from there. Like that. And then actually I'm gonna bring this wall all the way down. So it's just like a goofy, goofy looking house. Okay, very cartoony. And let's put the door, let's put the door right there. All right, so we can start popping in some of our windows. Let's say I want like three windows down here. And they don't have to be rectangle windows. You could do circle windows, you could do triangle windows. I'm just gonna stick with regular rectangle. And then of course, one up here, the spooky one way up on top. And then let's bring a window here. And we'll put a window here too. Okay, so I've kind of got my windows on an angle as well, just kind of matching the walls. And if you have to erase some of this, you know, definitely erase it. Um, we're gonna be using a lot of black paint, so I wouldn't worry about um, trying to get rid of your pencil marks. And we're gonna be bringing in, maybe let's put in a spooky tree, like in the background. Like let's say there's a tree coming in this way. We'll have a tree coming in there. And then we could do actually maybe a tree coming out this way. I just kind of want to place where the tree's gonna go. Not really the branches at this point, but just kind of where the tree is gonna be. Like that. All right. Um, and then we will pop in a 
fence. Let's pop in like a scary fence here. So I'm just making some, um, it's almost like a hashtag right here. Just two lines down, two lines over. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. Like that. All right, so that's really all we're going to be drawing at this point. So the rest is just paint. If you wanna go ahead and erase some of your pencil marks, if they're too dark or whatever, go for it. Um, you can do that right now. I'm gonna leave mine dark just so you guys can see it. Okay, so the paints that I'm using, and I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, it is the Winsor Newton brand. I've got my um, pale cad red, my cad yellow. I've got my, um, I've got a couple gouaches here too. I've got a black and a white, and I also have some Payne's gray also. So if you have those colors, go ahead and pull them. You could pull in any color you want. You could pull in greens, uh, purples would be really nice in this painting. Maybe I will pull in a little bit of a purple for the windows later. I'm not even sure. So, but um, just, just pick some like, um, just choose some colors that kind of look like fall. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our haunted house nice and saturated here. Go around your windows. Just get it damp. You don't have to put too much water on there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my Payne's Gray. And I had a little bit here already on my, on my palette, but I'm going to put a little more. And if you want to use your black at this point, you could do that too, but I'm going to use my Payne's Gray. All right, and I'm going to just lightly brush it in. And you can let some of it bleed if you want, go around those windows so that maybe you have some lighter areas, some darker areas. If you want to pop in maybe a little bit more, like around the edges, especially towards the bottom where it's shadowed, the house would be shadowed more towards the bottom. And just take the house in sections, so don't be too overwhelmed. Just take it in little sections right now. Just look at each one of these as like a little, a separate little painting at the moment. Okay, so that's one section. So see how, even if you wanna drop in a little bit darker down towards the bottom, or maybe under the roof would be a little bit darker. Okay. So you could do that now while it's nice and damp. Then we're gonna go ahead and get the next section of the house damp as well. Okay, pulling in my Payne's Gray again. And if you wanna pull in black, go for it. If you wanna make it a purple house, you could do that too, that'd be really cool. I'm just gonna choose black. So see how that's giving it some dimension already? So you've got your lights and your darks within that little square, both of those. So just keep moving up the house. Okay, so now we can start doing our roof. And if you wanna make your roof a different color, you can definitely do that. I'm gonna be pulling in um, more of the um, gouache, the black. But if you don't have gouache, don't worry about it. Just use your black, your black um, regular paint as well. It's just that I have my gouache right on hand, so that's what I'm gonna be using. So see the difference already between Payne's Gray and black? This is just a little bit deeper. This has got a little bit more of a bluish purple tone to it. So there is a difference between your Payne's Gray and your black. If you wanted to do your roof Payne's Gray as well and just have it all be solid, you know, one color, you could do that too. You can even make the, the roof come up a little bit, just make it look kind of funny like that, just really exaggerated if you want to. 
your painting. Do whatever you want. And actually, I really think that's cute, so I'm going to do this one too. Just exaggerate. I'm just bringing the corners of my, my roof line up a little bit. Just curving them up a little bit like that. I kind of like that. Um, our house is still a little damp, but not that bad. I'm going to go ahead with my paints gray and I'm going to just start darkening up some of the edges of my walls here. More like the outside of them, maybe around the, the window. Now where your roof is, it's going to be really saturated. So you're probably not going to get that much definition where your roof is. So just maybe work more towards the bottom here. If you want to go ahead and blow dry this, you can even just go ahead and blow dry it and, um, and then add your next layer, which I might end up doing, but let's see how this works. Super cute. All right, so then at this point, um, we're going to be starting to work on the ground right here. So for that part, we're just going to take our, um, oh, and for this house, I was using a size five, if I didn't mention that. Um, and now I'm going to be mo moving to my size um, seven. So I'm just going to get a little bit of a wash here. Let my house bleed right into it. Still using Payne's gray or black, doesn't matter. You want this to be a spooky little painting, so it's going to be mostly like a black and white painting with some, with some pops of color in the window. Uh, let's take a little black, deepen that up a little bit. Once we pop in all our trees, it'll look like a really shaded um, painting because then the trees would be making a little bit of shade on the ground. So then it'll make a little bit more sense why this is all shaded. So our sky is going to stay white in this painting. If you want to go ahead and pop in maybe a little bit of a yellow or a purple for the sky, make it a little bit misty. Um, Go ahead and do that now. I'm going to leave my page white. I'm going to leave my sky white. Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit of uh, a yellow or a purple later. But um, for right now, I think I just want to leave it white. So I'm going to be going on to the trees. I'm going to move back to my size 5. And I'm going to pick up my black. You can go ahead and wet your trees or you can just do them dry. I'm leaving mine dry right now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put my paint on. I'm following along with the little trunks that I had made with the pencil. I'm not sure you could still see that in the video, but I'm just following along with my pencil marks here. And you could just make some goofy little trees. As many branches as you want. You can have the tree curved. I'm going to have the tree kind of curved into the house like this. So it's like peeking out from behind it. Like that. I'm going to leave a little bit of um, definition here, a little bit of white space. And again, if you didn't, we can always bring in that bleed proof white later. No big deal. I'm going to shade my ground here a little bit more since it's still wet. If you want to move to a size um, zero for um, some of the smaller uh, branches, you can do that. I'm going to be doing that in a second. I'm going to bring these two big branches all the way up. Give them a little bit more definition. All right, so I'm going to be moving to my size zero now. And I'm going to be bringing in some of these smaller, thinner little uh, branches. All right, make as many branches as you want. You can overlap them, you can make some bigger, some, um, some smaller. Mine are just kind of bleeding off the page here and I'm just gonna have quite a few because I want it to look really spooky. So I'm gonna have quite a few little branches coming off. And then you can even put some like going behind the house thicken up that branch a little bit. So as your branches, the ones that are connected more to the main, you know, um, trunk here are thicker, especially right where they hit it, it's a little bit thicker. So thicken up your lines a little bit. And then as your branches go out, they thin, they thinen up a little bit. 
And then I'll just have some little branches come off this one. Make as many as you want. Okay, I'm gonna work on the other tree and then I think I'm gonna have them that they kind of come in together and both trees meet up at the top here. I think that'd look really cool. All right, so I'm gonna move back to my size um, five to do the trunk. And I've got two branches coming out this way. All right, I'm gonna deepen up some of my sections here with my paint. All right, and then I'm gonna move back to my size zero. And I'm gonna pop in some of those smaller little branches. Remember, where the branch hits that main trunk, it's a little thicker, just like that. Just thicken up your branch a little bit there at the end. And I'll bring a branch like it's peeking out from the house over here, just because I want one kind of coming out this way. So then it makes sense that you have one coming out from here because you've got the branch here. So it looks like it just extends all the way. So don't just do like a branch like that coming out the roof because it's like, well, where'd that come from? So you always want to make sure to follow it along back to the trunk, like it's peeking out from behind the house. That is looking really cute. All right, I am gonna go ahead, actually, is this dry? It is dry. You know what, I was gonna go ahead and dry it, but I don't need to. I'm gonna use my size zero, and I'm gonna be pulling in my cad yellow. You can go ahead and make a wash if you want. You can use it directly from um, your little uh, palette here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start just painting in, and I did not wet my windows. They're dry, and I'm just going in because I want to kind of leave some of that highlight in the window. So I did not wet it all the way. It's just my paint that's wet, not, not the actual window. But if you wanna go ahead and wet your window and you wanna let it bleed all the way through, you can totally do that. It'll give it a little bit of a different look. This just preserves a little bit of that highlight of the white paper showing through. Now, as you see, I am actually leaving the highlight on the window on the same side. My highlights are all gonna be on the right. It may look a little goofy if you've got highlights coming from every which way, but then again, this is supposed to be a goofy little painting. So I guess that wouldn't really matter for this painting anyways, but I am gonna keep all my highlights on the same side. And if you didn't leave any white highlight, you can always come in with your bleed proof white later. I'm gonna add a little bit of my cad red to it also. All right, so see how even my door, everything's got a highlight on the right side. That's why I did not wet my windows first. All right, now I'm gonna get my cad red wet a little bit here. And I'm gonna bring in just a little bit of orange, just dabbing it on the wet paint. So this is a wet on wet technique because I'm adding wet orange to my wet yellow. All right, so that just popped them even a little bit more. So see how you've got the underlayment of the yellow, the white paper, and now the orange. I think that looks fantastic. I love it. Gives it a lot of depth. Okay, so I'm gonna deepen up some of my walls here with my Payne's Gray. And I'm just gonna define some of those walls a little bit more now that my painting dried. My roof line, I'm using my size zero just so I can get a little bit more detailed. Add a little water if you want it to bleed up a little bit or bleed over. Add a little water to what you just did. Now here again is kind of 
working on dry paper because my paint has dried. I just want to get a little bit more detailed about it. That's why I did not wet it first, but you can always come in and put a little water on it now. And just kind of go over your little marks here. Okay, so see how that's, I'm actually leaving, okay, where I left the white of the windows on the right, I'm also leaving the lightest part of the house as the right also. So the house and the windows match. Everything on the right side is gonna be a little bit lighter. So you wanna just kind of stay consistent with that as well. It'll just make it look a little easier on the eye that all your shadows and highlights match. I'm gonna add a little water to blend that in a little bit. All right, so if you wanna start coming in with your Payne's gray or your black, and actually we did our roof black, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use my black. And you can start darkening up some of that side of your roof too. All right, so that looks really cute. You can go ahead and add more uh, detail if you want to as you go along. I think I'm going to stop with my detail right there for right now. Okay, so I've got all my darks on the left side, and that's what I wanted. All right, and I think I'm going to deepen up my ground a little bit. So I'm just going to take my size 7 brush. I'm going to deepen up my ground just a little bit with the black. You can leave some highlights. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, solid, solid black. There, so just a little bit like that. All right, um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this really quick and then we're gonna start popping in our fence and some details. Okay, so our house is pretty much dry. There's a couple little spots on here that I see that are still a little shiny, which means it's still a little damp, but. That's okay. So I'm gonna take my size zero brush. You could take your paint spray or your black. I'm gonna take my black and we're just gonna kind of go over where our fence would be, those little posts that we had made. And you might not see it too well, the black on black. You can thicken it up a little bit if you want. And we're gonna bring in some highlights on these anyway, so don't worry about it if you're not seeing too much. All right, so just like that. And then do the other side. Just like that. Okay. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And we're gonna start bringing in our um, archival ink. And I would just wanna do some panes on these windows. You could even do little shadows in the windows if you want to, like there's like a little figure up there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put just a couple little lines. You could do this with paint as well. I'm choosing just to use my, my ink. But you could definitely do this with your size zero paintbrush. And I'm gonna turn my page here just so I get my horizontal lines. Kind of even like that. So see how that just adds a little bit of a detail? If you wanna go around your window and add a little bit of a shadow, remember, keep your shadows on the same side. So I'm gonna be shadowing just the left side of my window and a little bit on the top, just like that. If you wanna add a little like figure in there, let's do that. Let's just add like a little figure in here. Ooh, scary little figure up there in the window. All right, and I'm going to do these windows too. And then your door, give it a doorknob. Let's see, I'll have the doorknob on that side. And maybe I'll have a little window up on top, like that. So my door looks like it's like a glass door or it's orange or whatever, it doesn't matter. This is just pretend, just have fun with it. Okay, so I've got my little character up there, that's cute. All right, so, um, oh, and another thing, if you want, 
To add a couple more little branches here and there with your pen, you can get really, really thin little branches as well. If you had done enough with your um, paintbrush and your watercolor, then don't worry about it. I'm just gonna fill in my area just a little bit more. Oh, and another thing, if you wanna bring in a bat or a bird in the sky, it's just kind of like a little curve, like two little curves. Um, so I'm just gonna have one there. And I'm gonna use a different paintbrush. I'm gonna use one of my generic paintbrushes, just a little one, if I have a little one here. And I'm gonna be bringing in just a little bit of highlight, maybe, let's see, where where do we want some highlight? Maybe we'll put, throw a little highlight in just on our um, right side of the house. And I'm watering it down a little bit on my palette. So I'm just taking a little of my archival ink, putting, or not archival, okay, my bleed proof white, I'm sorry. And then I'm just taking a little bit of water and I'm just watering it down a little bit. That's how you just get a little bit of a smoother line. Otherwise, if it's dry, you will get a grainy line. And I don't want a grainy line, I just want a smooth line. And you can highlight a little bit of your, um, your fence post there. Okay, like that, just so your fence pops out a little bit. If you feel like you missed um, a little bit of that detail in here, where your two roofs bled together, you can always pop in a little bit of white on that side. I know it's the left side, which is shadowed, but you wanna at least define that a little bit. All right, do a little bit of the roof on this side, a little bit of the roof on this side. You can, if you wanted to, you could bring some little highlights down on your roof like that. like that, maybe just more on the right side. Okay, super, super cute. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I don't think so. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to um, just kind of soften up my trees a little bit and I'll show you how I'm doing that. Just with water, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna wet some of my paint here and I'm gonna soften up where those branches are, just so it's not so stark on the, on the sky, just like that. So I'm just taking water, my big brush, my size seven, and I'm going over some of those branches. I'm just re-wetting some of those branches, that's all. I did not put paint on my brush, it's just water. And I'm reactivating the paint that's already on my paper. And I'm just gonna soften up that sky a little bit, those trees. All right, this is the part now, if you want, if you did not paint your sky already um, before we did our house or our trees, you can come in now if you want to. And I'm gonna just take a little bit of my yellow. I'm gonna water it down because I just want a very light wash. And you can pop in, maybe like the moon is behind the, the house or something. If you want, you could just pop in a little bit of yellow here and there. And I'm just doing it on the bottom here. If you wanna pop in a few more birds um, or bats, go ahead and dry your page. You can always do that. Um, if you wanted to add a couple little bushes on the sides, you could do that as well. I think I'm just gonna leave mine like this. I think I like it just like that. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, but please, 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 if you want more videos like this one, please subscribe to this channel. Have a great day. Bye.